Hi there and welcome to the art studio again today. So I will be doing 12 different paintings on a very small clipboard as you can see here. So the space that will be covered will be about 5 inches by 5 inches and each of the 12 clipboards that I do will have a unique painting. So stay tuned and see what we do with these. Alright so I've taken the little clipboards and I've taped them off with some masking tape covering most of the back and giving myself a clean edge here. So this will be five inches by five inches, which will only need about an ounce to an ounce and a half of paint. So I'm mixing my paints with the flow mix. You'll see the recipe at the end. And for this one, I'm gonna start with a little bit of beige for the sand. I've layered some blues. I'm going to actually do that as a flip cup. So all that paint's gonna rain, run down and I'm just going to kind of lift and drag. And in the meantime, I'm going to add some embellishments to what is going to end up being my sand. Some dark. There we go. Trusty stick, mixing those colors kind of in, trying to replicate some sand. Let's get it all the way to the edges. Beautiful. All right, now let's see what we've got with our flip cup. And so like I said, I'm just going to pull it up and drag it back. And this is going to be our ocean. So let's let our ocean be back in this corner. And a little bit of back in this corner. And then when this totally dries, I'll add some waves here in white. There we go. All right, there's our ocean. Should we make the beach come back a little bit more? No, I think I like it like that. All right, so that one's done too. All right, so hope you're right, enjoying. So as you can see, the paintings are dry. I have added some vinyl stickers. I do have a silhouette. It's kind of like a Cricut machine that cuts out some letters. And these are some of the logos that they use at this particular establishment that I'm making these clipboards for. And so I've mixed up some clear resin to go over top. And I'm using some Cast and Craft, which is opaque pigments. And um, I will make a little bit of waves on this one uh, when I'm done. And I have ready, I have an ABC tray. If I have extra resin, I always try to make a couple of the uh, keychains or whatever. So, all right, so we're just gonna add a layer. And I always say my general rule of thumb when covering something is about one fourth of the size. Now this one is a little bit, that one's a little bit much. That one's just about right. And then I come back, I like to spread it out with my fingers. Some people spread it out with a stick or a comb or a jagged edge. Um, like you would a countertop. I like to feel where the vinyl 
or where the I like to feel where the coverage is so that's always why I like to do it with my fingers all right so I'm not going to put as much on this last one just in case I have too much that I need to spill over and making sure my white is mixed up and here we go so I'm going to move this around over top of this one because I know there's a little bit much on this one and it will spill over now you never want to make your layer of resin too thin that will cause little dimples in it and you see I have it elevated over a cup that way it can run over the sides just as much as it wants to and the back is taped so I'm not worried about that Well, actually, that looks pretty good. I'm drip just a little bit off. Just a little bit. Beautiful. All right, and I'm going to come back with a heat gun and make sure that I go over this because resin will have bubbles in it. That's beautiful. All right, same with this one. I'm going to do it over top of the one that has a little bit less. adding waves to this one. So what I do is I usually just kind of drip just a little bit here and there. And sometimes I pick a place where there would be natural waves out in the ocean. And I just add some waves. Sometimes a second layer. Now, if you hear some strange sounds, there's construction going on next door, so. All right, so let's. All right, and then what I'll do is I'll take the heat gun and move that around a little bit. So if you watch as I'm doing this, you'll see the white spread and it'll look like the sprays of some waves. And sometimes I'll come back with another layer of that in a little bit after it cures some more. It will make more white spots. So that's how you make your waves. All right, it's time to take the tape off and see how these did. Look how beautiful this one is. So let me get all this off. And as you can see, I keep an uh, either an X-Acto knife or a box cutter knife because where the seam is here is now sealed in resin. So what I'll do is I'll peel all this tape back and go ahead and take this off and make sure that seam is doing okay because we do not want the resin to be stuck. See how it folds right there? So you wanna find where your edge is and then make sure it gets cut. All right, so let me finish getting these done and I'll be right back with you. So that folds that over. And you see we've got the white tape too, so. Okay, so once that's loose, I like to fold it over. And then we'll go from there. Actually, I thought maybe I better leave it on so you can see the process. So you see this 
sometimes doesn't come off clean. See that? But that's all right. A little bit deeper cut, and usually it just comes right off. There you go. All right, so there that is. And I will take this tape off the back also. And once I'm done taking the tape off the back, So you see when there's a drip like that, sometimes you just pop it up over, fold it back and forth so it doesn't rip your sides off. And sometimes it's a little too stuck. Gotta dig in a little bit. And now I can add my sticker to it. So this is my shop's sticker. And I'll add that to it. And so now I'll just add my shop's sticker to the back. And we have a beautiful clipboard or one of our local restaurants. Let me know what you think.